Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. Before the Brexit referendum in 2016, people said some pretty wild things. Remember the days when politicians claimed that getting a deal between the UK and EU would be the easiest thing in history? Well, some four and a half years later, it's not looking like it quite played out like that. Both sides have seemingly walked away from negotiations, with Britain about two months away from finally leaving for good. So, as things stand, it looks like no deal will be reached between the two sides, and according to many, that's not great. On TLDI UK, we've already discussed if Britain is ready for a no-deal Brexit, and whether it could even be good for the UK. So we thought it would be a good idea to jump over to TLDI EU and discuss if Europe needs a deal, or if the EU can cope with the current situation. Over on the TLDI US channel, we're running a competition that we wanted to tell you about quickly. If you're paying attention to the race and you think you know better than the pollsters, then enter TLDR's Route to 270 competition. Submit your predicted election map, and if yours matches the reality, then you'll be entered into a draw to win over $100 of TLDR prizes, including exclusive items. And because we're a British company, we'll also be adding in some British snacks and treats. For your chance of winning, click the link in the description and submit your guess. Terms and conditions apply, entries close on Friday at midnight Eastern. Good luck. I know I mentioned the referendum earlier, but cast your mind back again to 2016. And certainly if you were in the UK, you will have heard the phrase, they need us more than we need them. This common argument made by the proponents of Brexit suggested that deals with the EU would be easy because the UK held all the cards. The EU needed to make a deal with the UK because they needed Britain more than the UK needed Europe. Whether it's true or not, this idea really captured some people's imagination and certainly gave the Leave campaign a boost. So let's answer the question, does the EU need the UK and is Europe ready for a no-deal exit? Well, it's certainly undeniable that businesses on both sides of the channel are growing increasingly concerned about the prospect of no deal, with manufacturers warning that disrupted supply chains, higher transportation costs and new tariffs could significantly disrupt their businesses. Several industries are publicly in the limelight when it comes to the future of the EU, with or without the UK by its side. Notably, the car industry, agriculture, food and drink, wine and pharmaceuticals. So let's take each in turn. Cars. The automotive industry is certainly a major player on both sides of the channel. According to a House of Commons briefing paper on UK-EU trade, road vehicles are the second largest single group of UK goods exported to the EU. In 2019, some £17.3 billion worth of cars were exported from the UK to the EU accounting for 10.2% of all UK exports. On the other side, the UK imported some £48.5 billion of European cars, the single biggest category, comprising of 18.2% of all British imports. All in all, some massive numbers. The UK and EU are, in the eyes of some, mutually dependent on each other for cars. Throughout the Brexit debate, Constantly, people on both sides evoked the role of cars. For example, it was claimed that given Germany's relative power in the European Union and Germany's position as an automotive leader, with the likes of BMW, Audi, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen all being German brands, that would make reaching a deal simple. They would all push Merkel to conclude a deal, no matter what, so that they could keep selling their cars to the British. While the industry has been at pains to stress the need for a deal, this hasn't actually correlated to a super simple deal driven by the automotive industry. Back in September, ACEA, the European Automotive Manufacturers Association, which represents 16 major European car, van, truck and bus manufacturers, came out with a public statement. Alongside 21 other national associations, they stressed the impact that a no-deal Brexit would have saying that in the event of a WTO tariff situation, the production of some 3 million EU and UK built cars and vans would be at risk, leading to a combined trade loss of up to 110 billion euros by 2025, on top of the 100 billion euro lost due to the coronavirus this year alone. 
ACEA was again at pains to stress just how significant the industry is. Some 14.6 million Europeans work in the auto industry, both directly and indirectly. Motor vehicles also account for 440.4 billion euros of tax receipts in all major European markets, and the industry as a whole generated a trade surplus for the EU of over 74 billion euros, stressing again that there were just weeks to save the auto industry. But what about agriculture, food and drink? Well, just like the automotive industry, the UK and EU are highly connected on the agricultural front. The UK imports a significant amount of products from the EU, with a report by the European Commission on agri-food trade putting the UK at the top of the pack. Between February 2019 and January 2020, some 40.3 billion euros of agri-food products were exported from the EU to the UK, accounting for nearly 22% of all EU agri-food exports, and nearly double that of the US. Yet again, some massive numbers. And yet again, the industry on the European side is calling for an agreement. Groups representing the food manufacturing, farming and wider agri-food industries published a joint statement all the way back in June, warning of serious consequences if a zero-tariff, zero-quota FTA isn't agreed with the UK saying the combination of no agreement and no extension to the transitional agreements would have significant negative consequences for the EU agri-food sector. After all, the sector is a major employer, and without transitional agreements, it's hard for them to plan. You can't exactly store thousands upon thousands of tomatoes or apples for months upon end. In fact, Arla, a Danish-Swedish cooperative, warned in September that a no-deal situation could cost European dairy exports some 1.2 billion euros in duties, with the company alone facing 100 million euros worth of customs duties, an additional cost that would have to be passed on to consumers, at least according to their chief commercial officer for Europe. Let's take a look at wine. Yes, I know this is a relatively niche industry, but I'm writing this with a glass of Portuguese rosé, so let's just roll with it. In recent years, many large-scale wineries have branched out. Rather than selling just to large distributors, they've also been selling directly to small wholesalers, restaurants, and direct consumers. This system worked well in the past, with one major French winery sending a third of its exports to the UK. The issue being what happens post-Brexit. In the event of a no deal, regulatory changes and hurdles will come into place, requiring every shipment to have a full analysis of every wine on health and safety grounds. Finally, let's take a look at pharmaceuticals. Now more than ever, the pharmaceuticals industry is playing a major role, with a global pandemic, cooperation and trade on medical products ought to be a priority. Even setting aside the social and health demands associated with getting a deal on pharmaceutical trade, there's an economic reasoning behind the push. The European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations highlighted in a report published in July that in the event of a no deal, EU pharmaceutical exports would be expected to drop by 1.2%. They also place a key emphasis on the fact that a simple FTA on its own isn't the be-all and end-all, and that a full FTA with a mutual recognition agreement on inspections and batch testing is necessary, with them remarking that the EU's nominal GDP will be 1.3 billion euros higher annually with an MRA than without. It's clear to see that the industry wants a deal, but at any cost? The EU is ultimately balancing the demands of businesses with the wider principle of the single market, of a secure internal market. No matter the value of external trade, internal trade is a key facet of the European project, and it can't be ignored. The issue is how to balance these two. A complete shutting down of EU-UK trade under a no-deal scenario could immensely hurt the likes of France and Germany, as well as Ireland. But the EU can't just throw away the value of their internal market. This would always have been an extremely turbulent time for businesses, governments and citizens. Even if the UK and EU had reached a deal, there would still have been significant changes. 
but the lack of a deal certainly increases these issues, heightening tensions and making disruption yet more likely. If a deal is eventually reached, industries, companies and ultimately people will just have a matter of weeks, days if not hours to adjust. Whether all on either side of the channel can weather the storm is still yet to be seen. What do you think though? How will British and European businesses be impacted by a no-deal Brexit? Do you think the businesses will try to pressure governments to reach a deal in the final stages of the agreements? And if a concerted effort really begins, do you think the politicians will cave? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then be sure to back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.